Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. My name is Gabby and today we're going to talk about four different tools that I tend to use quite often. You often see them behind me or sometimes behind the scenes. And uh, I will uh, describe them in brief and then in detail. And I'll put links below in case anybody is interested. But be careful, there's some different variations of these tools. So make sure you watch the video to make sure which one you really want to get in case you are interested. So let's get going and let's go with the first one. The first one is a variac or what we call a variable transformer. So what it is, is it's a transformer that you can actually, by turning this button, you can adjust the voltage. You can see the voltage dropping here and it's fairly as simple as that. While this looks very expensive, it's actually not, believe it or not, it's, uh, it's under $100 and you can get it easily off Amazon. Uh, they come in different variations and I'll talk to you about it and when I talk about it in detail. What's the purpose of this? If you are doing like vintage audio equipment that's been sitting around for quite some time, if you go and plug it in after sitting for a few years on the shelf, all the capacitors could get damaged. So you want to ramp it up slowly. So what you do is you plug it in and you start, for example, at really low voltage. Say you start 10 volts and a few minutes later you put 20 and so slowly and slowly, slowly you ramp it up uh, to 120. Uh, so just so it makes the capacitor slowly get back to life and uh, avoids having uh, problems and, and issues. Next we have the FNIR-C DSO TC3. This is one of their latest edition. You can get the TC03 of the FNIR-C official site on AliExpress for close to $50. I will put the links for those below. You can also get it off uh, Amazon as well. This is a multi-device in one. It does many things. On the tester mode, you can test uh, capacitors, you can test inductors, which is finds really valuable because not too many things uh, can test inductors. You can test transistors, diodes, zener diodes, and uh, MOSFETs. On top of that, this can also uh, be used as an oscilloscope. Yes, believe it or not, right now it's uh, displaying a square wave of one kilohertz. And it comes with the, uh, basically the proper oscilloscope tool. And uh, on, as well, on top of that, you can use it as a generator. And uh, you can generate anywhere up to 100 kilohertz from 1 hertz to 100 kilohertz. So it's a frequency that's perfect for, you know, a DIY that's involved into audio for testing your audio gear and stuff. I'm not saying, you know, this is the ultimate professional uh, setup to use for if you're doing, you know, this as a profession, but for us DIYers that don't want to spend a lot of money. So if you don't want to use equipment like this that I have here that I later bought and cost hundreds, if not close to thousands of dollars, then you probably be better off using something like this little device. It's around $60 and it can test so many things and give you that oscilloscope and uh, function generator as well, all in one little box. Number three is not a cheap unit. It's a, it's a desoldering unit by Heiko. It's a very popular one and used by professionals. This is a professional grade unit. It's uh, close to $300, slightly up, uh, over or under. And uh, I've procrastinated for years not buying this. And I was using those pump things and stuff till one day I had this uh, big expensive amp I'm trying to use and I had to replace like, you know, 20 transistors and so many capacitors. And I said, I don't want to mess it up. So I ended up taking the plunge and buying this thing, I never regret it. I, I keep kicking myself, why didn't I buy it sooner? Because it's so much easier and it's such a pleasure to use. It's not cheap, but I think it's worth it, especially if you're doing recapping or anything like that, or working with some small components that's hard to desolder sometimes. This works like magic. I'll talk about it more in detail a little later because you have to watch to make sure you get the right unit for you because you can uh, order the wrong one. And the last and fourth item that I want to talk about is actually a soldering iron. It's very portable, but still very powerful. 
it actually works uh, up to 420 degrees or 780 degrees Fahrenheit. It's about 65 watts in power and it comes with multiple tips so it's uh, really really handy and like I said it's very portable and you just unplug it and uh, and it's really easy to to move around. I find I end up I uh, ended up using a lot because sometimes I don't want to use my big heavy unit or definitely don't want to move it around to other places uh, when I'm trying to solder some smaller jobs. And the SOFOR-Z Variac, the uh, variable transformer, there's a couple things you need to watch for. Is they come in different wattage. So you got the uh, 500 watts, the 1000 and there's a 2000. I think there might be other variations but these are the most common ones. I use, uh, myself, I'm using a 1000 uh, VA, which I find it enough, uh, but you could use a 2000 one if you happen to be using like some heavy duty amplifiers. The one I have, I end up replacing the display because the little needle that comes with it's really very hardly, you can hardly see it and it's hard to tell exactly where it is. But at the end it wasn't that necessary because when you look on top you could see exactly the voltage so it's not that necessary but you can get one with a little digital display built in it's a little bit more money but it might be worth it for you it depends on uh, your budget now let's talk about the near c dso tc03 this is our latest version and i find myself using it a lot uh, often to test uh, inductors or capacitors uh, I used to use it at the beginning to as a function generator and an oscilloscope till one day I decided to upgrade and bought some very expensive ones but for someone who's just starting out as a DIYer that especially involved in audio a unit like this can be very magical because it does so many things you're testing your your uh, inductors, your capacitors, your resistors because it's always good to verify those components. Never rely on what's, what you get. You always you have to verify it because especially in some critical positions could be a uh, difference, could make a difference. Uh, the function generator is not bad and it's actually pretty good especially for audio purposes and the oscilloscope is actually pretty good. All this for 60 bucks you really can't can beat something like that. I'm going to quickly show you what this thing can do. So we have it here in uh, tester mode. We're going to take an inductor and press test. And here we go. It says it's an inductor and it's 0 0.8 ohm and 0 0.66 millihenries. So it's giving you the resistance and the millihenries and the inductance. Capacitors. I'm using all the things that you would use as a DIY audio guy. And there we go. It says capacitor 442.6 microfarads, uh, V loss of 0.5%, and also ESR at 0 0.07 ohm. Okay, we're going to put this is a double diode. We're going to test it out. And there you go. It says two diodes. That's Correct. Regular diode. And it gives you the parameters of it. And uh, this is a transistor. It's a PNP transistor. It gives you also the parameters here. I'm not going to bore you with all the details. I'm just giving you a quick saying of what this thing can do. This is a Zener diode and this is actually very interesting. Sometimes these don't have their values written on them and you have no idea what the Zener diode is. And here it goes, it tells you it's a 12.4 volt Zener. And then you know. Uh, of course resistors, if you're building something, you always want to double check your resistors. Make sure they're actually the correct value. And because often they tell you it's certain value when it, in reality it is not. There you go, 274. It is supposed to be 270. Yeah, close enough. So here you have it. So this is the testing mode and now we can go into the oscilloscope mode. 
and we are actually inputting a square wave from the actual generator that's built into the unit. It's actually generating, by default, it'll generate a square wave at a one kilohertz, and you could see it's displaying it properly here. And uh, I'm gonna go out and in the generator function here, you can actually go from anywhere from one hertz to 1000 kilohertz and different sign and square and pulse and triangle and all that kind of stuff. And again, I'm not going to go through the details. Lots of videos out there that go through all these details on how to use it if you're interested. I just want to grab your attention that something like this could be very valuable for someone who's, you know, building speakers, fixing some amplifiers here and there. Uh, but, you know, not doing it every day and doesn't want to invest in hundreds and thousands of dollars of equipment. A $60 unit like this could actually do all these things at once. So FNIR CDS OTC3 comes with the cool box and also all the cables, a whole bunch of cables, charging cables and little cables to hook up your components. This is for the function generator. So even give you a really authentic uh, oscilloscope uh, tip as well and of course manual and it's got a good description in English and uh, and all that stuff so not too bad for 60 bucks I think it's uh, it's a great starter for a DIY audio and as far as the uh, echo desoldering gun is uh, you might want to watch there's a couple of uh, variations you can get a unit that's designed for the US or North America for a 120 volt version and uh, it's around $330 and you can get the uh, uh, Japanese version for around 235 something like that so you save quite a bit of money but it's 100 volts so now some people say you could use it for 120 I don't really buy it I try using mine on 120 and I found it was overheating and the uh, motor was humming quite loud uh, compared to when it's running on, on proper 100 volts. So it might work, but what I suggest if you're buying those two is set your unit here at 100 volts. It's sitting usually doing nothing anyway, so might as well use it for something. And it's powering my HECO and then I can save some money there and I can use it. Uh, one other thing is when I'll put the link for both the US version and the Japanese version in the description below to avoid some confusion because they don't really tell you exactly what they are till you have to read the questions and stuff or we could be surprised on what you're gonna get. Uh, the last thing uh, is when you buy this it doesn't come with a holder. Uh, it comes with a holder but it's kind of dinky little metal thing you have to put it like this and I find it a little bit annoying especially when something hot you really don't want to hurt yourself. So I end up buying, this is a, it's a for, made for the iron uh, holder. It's a Heiko 633, but it seems to work very well with this as well. It's not perfect, but it holds nicely and I find it, it does a trick for me and uh, it's much safer and less uh, hazardous this, this way. So here you have it. I'll, I'll try to put a little, find this one. I'll put a link for this one as well, if possible. Uh, the Heiko is a little quick demo here if you want. So we're gonna go here. And then we're gonna do the other one. Let it heat up first. And then And once you've done that, it should be fairly loose. There you go, just came out. It's nice and clean, no mess. And it's really handy when you're doing lots of recapping and doing a lot of things. If you're only doing like one or two components a year, don't bother. But if you're recapping even one item a year, it's really worth it because when you're trying to remove uh, 20 capacitors and so many resistors, transistors or whatever, it comes in uh, fairly handy. And as far as the uh, soldering iron, it uh, comes in a cool box and uh, if you are buying this, do get the extra additional uh, soldering tips. I think for like five or seven dollars more you get all these tips, which is pretty good deal. Otherwise it comes with just one tip. and. Uh, 
took me a while at the beginning to figure out how this thing goes. It wasn't turning on, but I figured out you have to take this out, put the tip in, and then put it on. And that makes it work. And uh, it also comes with a power supply. And uh, it's like a mini USB-C uh, connector. And uh, this is a very nice, very nice soft, uh, soft uh, tube. And basically you just plug it in here, plug in this thing in the wall, and this will come into play. And you press this button here, and you double press here, and it just turns on. And you can see it heating up 307. It's going to go up to 420, I think. Let's see. Let's see how far it goes. And this is a 65 watt unit, by the way. And here it is, uh, 420, oh, 421. So at least uh, this is more politically correct, I guess. So, uh, so here we go. And uh, so you could actually adjust the temperature if you don't want it this hot. Uh, this is in Celsius, you can actually switch it to Fahrenheit as well, so it's good for everybody. The soldering iron is around $35. You can get the soldering iron off the AliExpress official FNIRCES uh, website and also off Amazon. I'll put links for that below. So yeah, so here you have it. Uh, it's the tip that comes with it's actually pretty nice, but uh, there's some nice other tips that are good, uh, especially there's some really nice small ones in case you're working with some really tedious stuff. I hope you found this video helpful. I'll put a couple uh, videos in the corners above in case you're interested in some of my other projects where I did some stuff with some other testing equipment. Take care and hope to see you again.